Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece. Today, we need to talk about the impending Bitcoin death cross. You're going to hear a lot about that. And what I want to do is I want to take you down a little uh, history lane to see what the death cross has done from 2013, 2017, 2018, 19, and 20, and what it means for potentially coming in the future. I also want to take a look at uh, a very odd story that uh, JP Morgan is now all of a sudden positive on crypto. Then we'll take a look at uh, what whales are doing as they take us to school and show us how things should be done. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is the 10th of January and we are keep going down as far as the market cap. I know it's painful, but it, hey, that is what it is. 1.87 trillion uh, as far as a market cap, all the way down from uh, over $3 trillion for a market cap. So if you uh, had taken profits uh, along the way, congratulations, You're probably doing pretty good. Probably can scoop up uh, some pretty good deals right now, but uh, that is where we're at. If we take a look at just what's going on as far as like uh, the actual uh, cryptocurrencies, digital assets, we've got Bitcoin over seven days, down 15%, Ethereum down 22%, Binance Coin 22% down, Solana 24%. And in the last 24 hours, it's not looking any better, especially as we've opened up, except for Near Protocol, Near up uh, 4%, but they had a monstrous run. So congratulations, anybody who's holding Near. Uh, but what I really want to take a look at first before we get into uh, this death cross is what's going on with the traditional markets because unfortunately we are now attached to the hip because there are so many different institutional players in and what I want to take a look at is the market that just opened because right now it's around 1030 Atlantic time which is 935 or 930 roughly uh, Eastern Standard Time so uh, the markets have started trading and uh, over just the last five days we see the s p 500 go down and then of course on wednesday when those minutes were released uh, from the federal reserve where they said hey we're going to cut back on uh, uh the bonds we're going actually going to uh, increase rates all of a sudden traditional player players, players are like this is awful and they started selling off and you come over here another sell off and then on friday it had kind of evened out. Everything was looking pretty good. But then this morning, eh, we're down again. So I was like, well, that's a bummer. However, uh, when in doubt, zoom out. And this also applies to the traditional market. So take a look at uh, the one month. Okay, well, over here, we had a pretty big decline in December. And now here we are about the same thing. Let's take a look at six months. How are we doing? Hey, not too bad uh, as far as six months. And then what about over the year? That's pretty good. Let's be honest. I mean, uh, yes, it it is uh, has been down because of this awful thing about the Fed raising rates by three quarters of a point. Woo, and uh, and then if we take a look at five years, it's even more ridiculous. So again, when in doubt, zoom out. But that leads us to our very first point, really, which is the death cross. And I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because you're going to hear it from everybody. Everybody's going to be talking about today and how awful it is, and blah, 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 it's just the worst. Let's really just break it down and see what it's all about. So this is a great article from Coindesk. Bitcoin approaches death crosses. Goldman Sachs foresees four Fed rates hike this year. We'll see if that's true. Uh, but the, uh, it's all about the history. And remember, uh, as the 200-day moving average, or as the 50-day moving average goes underneath a 200-day moving average, that is considered the death cross, the end-all, be-all. It's going to be awful. Very uh, slick name to really uh, inspire fear. But is it fearful? Let's take a look. So the 50-day moving average, we know what it is. Goldman Sachs foresees the Fed raising borrowing costs at least four times versus the previous prediction of three rate hikes. Uh, Friday's U.S. labor market report, and this is what kicked everything off because the Fed's like, well, we need to take, take a look at some indicators to why we could actually raise it. And of course, the market report showed that unemployment rate dipped to 3.9%. So they're like, oh, well, the economy's doing better. So let's just raise the rates so we can, you know, make it go down because we gotta, we gotta get all this money back because we printed up the wazoo, which is true. They did. That's called quantitative easing, and it's uh, what has really helped the the case for Bitcoin. Anyhow, this has strengthened the case for the Fed to hike to hike rates concurrently within the end of the asset purchases in March. Many of Bitcoin's previous death crosses, including those seen in 2014 and 2018. This was the bad one, coincided with either a sell-off in the days that followed or a continued macro downtrend that confirmed a bear market. Now, if you had watched the video, uh, it was me, uh, Ben, and James. Ben from Into the Cryptoverse, James from Invest Answers. We did our DCA show on Friday. We had taken a look at different factors, and we all said the same thing. We're in a bear market already. The question is, is this 
bearish market? Is it going to be for a short term or is it going to be for a long term? And I know people are like, it's not a bear market, it's not a bear market. Okay, well, uh, it is what it is. The big question is, and we had talked about this, is this crypto winter where we're going for years or is it for a short amount of time, one to three months up to six, where we either go sideways or downward trend? Take a look at the video, but I can just tell you, we do not think it's uh, crypto winter. And like James says, crypto, crypto seasons, which is pretty good. But so what we have here, that first part, in 2021 and 2020 was a pretty pretty bearish type of fr uh, framework after the death cross but is it always like that no the market is often oversold and due for a bounce by the time the crossover has confirmed as was the case in june last year and march of 2020 so again it can do the exact opposite it could actually confirm everything and say well everything's oversold uh we're actually going down I mean, really, as far as like uh, uh, what's going on in the market, has anything really particularly changed? Uh, has has Bitcoin been hacked? Has someone come on some Satoshi Nakamoto? Has everything just gone to zero? No. And so nothing really has changed. And there's so many things that are actually oversold, uh, like we talked about in a couple of days ago. Ethereum is now the most oversold in almost two years, according to this RSI indicator. And we had talked about that. It's, there is so much sell-off going on because people are so scared and that's fine. Uh, that's exactly what you, uh, you is your, are your options to do if you see it so fit, but you have to take a look again at the big picture and see where things are going. I'm not telling you to not sell. I'm not telling you not to buy uh, because people will say, well, the diamond hands, thing like that. I'm not a big believer in the diamond hand theory. I think that you should uh, get in during the dips and you should dollar cost average in and you should dollar cost average out as time goes on. Because when they have these massive dips, like right now, I'm sure if you were diamond handing forever, you might have wanted to, I don't know, had like 2%, 5%, 10% on the sidelines to buy something like this. Would have been nice, right? That's the whole point of uh, dollar cost averaging in and out. Not financial advice, just financial opinion. So if we take a look at the big picture, let's take a look at what JP Morgan, one of the biggest haters for crypto, uh, has to say. And before I go over the story, let me take you down a trip down memory lane when we take a look at good old Jamie Dimon and what he had to say as far as crypto. So Jamie Dimon in 2015 said, virtual currency will be stopped. And then on, uh, looks like September 2017, Jamie Dimon, C JP Morgan CEO, says Bitcoin is a fraud that will eventually blow up. And then if we get down to 2018, he says he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud and believes in the technology behind it. And then in 2020, he says uh, that Bitcoin is not my cup of tea, even as JP Morgan has warmed to crypto. And then uh, February 25th, 2021, he says investors, JP Morgan's investors could make Bitcoin 1% of our portfolios. And then, of course, in April 2021, JP Morgan now are going to actively offer managed Bitcoin fund states a report. So it's an interesting story, uh, how it actually develops over time. And I see this happening again and again and again. People who are big haters on crypto and digital assets, especially Bitcoin, now all of a sudden become converts. It's amazing to me. Now, to be fair, JP Morgan or D Jamie Dimon still isn't a big believer. He's still on the fence about it, doesn't think there's any intrinsic value. However, his entire company is like, we should probably get into it. So here's what they have said. Ah, they, JP Morgan, published a report on the 2022 outlook for crypto markets Friday. And one of the analysts states, the applications from crypto have only just begun. Web 3.0 uh, and greater use of NFTs tokenization are in the line of sight for 2022. The tokenization and fractionalization is holding particularly large promises at transaction speeds in crypto become more com competitive with traditional TradFi network, traditional finance. They state that DeFi was a bit of a flop in 2021, debatable, there is a lot of locked up value, uh, but it still has strong potential in 2022. I think we both agree on that. And then the development of crypto technology will continue driven by the scaling of layer one and the growth of layer two. Ethereum's merge and layer 2.0 introduction will speed up transactions and could significantly cut out energy consumption. To finish this up, the use case for crypto markets will continue. Uh, and new projects and tokens with more and different use cases will surface. And I think this was uh, the big one for me. If 2021 was the year of NFTs, then 2022 may be the year of the blockchain bridge, which means driving greater interoperability of various change 
or the year of financial tokenization. And they see that cryptocurrency is uh, going to be an increasing relevant to financial services. So when they talk about this blockchain bridge, I can't stress this enough because I was around when cell phones first came out. I remember having this big, huge block cell phone that was in my car. Some of you remember if you're old. And uh, I remember how like there was different fractionalizations of people offering these services. And it was ridiculous to think about now if you had like, if you were an AT&T sub subscriber, you could only contact AT&T. If you were on Verizon, you can only contact Verizon subscribers. If you were uh, T-Mobile, same thing. It sounds ridiculous too, doesn't it right now? Well, that's the same thing we're doing right now. If you have Ethereum, well, you can only use that uh, on, on the Ethereum chain. If you only have Solana, only the Solana chain. Now there's some interoperability uh, going on and forth between a little bit, but not the vast majority. So any kind of like new telephone network usually integrates with all the other big ones because it only makes sense. So when they talk about interoperability, cutting costs and layer two solutions, I totally agree. So all these L1s, near protocol, Ethereum, Cardano, Avalanche, uh, Solana, all these ones, I think at some point they're all just going to be able to work together and it's going to be a big thing. Uh, that's taking a look back and zooming out and taking a look at the big picture, which leads me to my last point when we talk about whales and how they're taking us to school. On this channel, we talk a lot about dollar cost averaging in and dollar cost averaging out. I know this is a scary time, especially if you bought uh, near the top. I did the same thing in 2017 and uh, for 2018 and 19, well, I still do it. Just I just dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out when I made some profits. And that was pretty much it. That's my whole strategy. Worked out pretty well. So when we take a look at this tweet, which I found kind of interesting, this is from Into the Block. And they state, whales are accumulating. As Bitcoin dropped below $50,000, addresses with over 1,000 Bitcoin proceeded to increase their holdings. Uh, these addresses tend to lower their holdings following large rallies and patiently wait to buy at lower levels. Again, they dollar cost average in. Uh, when things go down, they buy the dip and they dollar cost average out or take profits along the way. Let me blow up this image so you can see what I'm talking about. In blue is the volume and addresses with greater than a thousand Bitcoin. And you can see that as the price starts to go up, they start to dump. And that happens, that happened in March and April when it was an all time high. Then all of a sudden, it, it goes up because they start to accumulate Bitcoin as the price goes down because they're buying the dip. Then they just hit, hit it up for sideways. Then they sell a little bit as it starts to go up. Then it goes sideways again. And then when it goes high, guess what they do? They sell or they layer out. And then as it goes down, what do they do? They buy again. It's just a repeating cycle. And I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face, but look, it's a very simple thing and people make it so complex, but it doesn't have to be. Dollar cost average in, do your thing. Dollar cost average out. You can diamond hands if you want to, that's all up to you. I personally, I like to take a little profits along the way. And that's really it. And the last thing I will just say, uh, just to follow up on yesterday's video, we're gonna do a Puerto Rico meetup on Tuesday. I've already got the place lined up and uh, I'm gonna go over there and check it out today. And I'll let everybody know where it's at so you can just show up. Again, very informal place just to talk crypto. It's not gonna be fancy, that's just what it is. And that's it for today. So look, uh, if you like today's video, you found a little bit of value, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive and that's it. So thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.